Assalamu alaikum. Welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. Even though we are just a handful here, I know we have quite a few people watching online. Uh, Sylvia Mao is from Regional Medical Center, which is right in our backyard, as you all know. And it is one of the, I don't know what the ranking is, but it's one of the top rated stroke care hospitals in the country, if I'm not mistaken, or in the region at least. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a comprehensive yeah. stroke center. Comprehensive stroke center. I know it's a good hospital because they have their own helipad. You know, when a hospital has its own helipad, you know it's a good hospital. Right? You guys have your own helicopter, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So she's going to do a quick presentation on, you know, stroke awareness uh, and then briefly talk about fall prevention. Mm -hmm. And then she will tell uh, what are the classes available uh, for fall prevention, stroke awareness and all those, whether they are in-person exercises, mm -hmm. whether they're Zoom calls, whatever it is. Sylvia is here to share a wealth of information with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the program, uh, one of your colleagues, uh, who's a member here, Dr. Hassan, mm -hmm. you know him, did yes. he speak here already? He's coming. He's coming, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Hassan, our own uh, Kashif Hassan will be here uh, to say a few words in closing, okay? So without further ado, uh, hello kids. Uh, hi, honey, yeah, that's my wife. I don't call anybody honey. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Sylvia, you can get started. So you, you can come over here. in the front of this, yeah. So okay. we can see you a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. What's right, shining? I'm right in the middle of it. Oh, this light is shining. Mm -hmm. You okay. can see me. No, 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 hold up. You stay there. I'll move this guy here. Okay, now this is good enough. Hello, good evening everyone. Thank you for having me. I'm Sylvia. I am a nurse at Regional Medical Center and I'm actually a community educator. This position was funded by a grant through CareStar Foundation and so with that we are able to provide these resources free to the public for Santa Clara County residents. And we also partner with the Stroke Awareness Foundation, so you'll see that it's staff and that I would like just a verbal poll if you can hand raise at least for the people in the room to get an idea of what age group we're in okay so this is asking for your age is anybody under 35 <laughs> four okay anybody 36 to 50 two anybody 51 to 65 And 66 to 75? Four. Okay, and anybody 76 to 85? That's me. Okay. <clears throat> anybody 86 or over? Okay. Next slide. But what do you guys identify as? Caucasian? Hispanic, Latino? Asian? Other. Other? Just tell me, just shout Indian, it out. Other? Indians and Pakistanis mostly. Yeah. Okay. India, Pakistan mostly. Got it. Okay. Um, next slide. <laughs> this is a generic presentation, clearly. Um, different languages, we can skip this. Okay. Have you had a stroke before? Anybody is a yes? Could you raise your hand? Okay, so I'm going to count you all as no's. Okay, perfect. Okay, and then the next slide. Two more questions before we start, okay? So this test kind of gives me an idea of how much you know about strokes before the presentation. There's only one right answer. What are the signs and symptoms of a stroke? Is it weakness of the arm, leg, or face? Difficulties with speech? Changes in your vision? Or all of the above? There's only one correct answer. All of the above. So I'm going to have you hand raise this one. Weak, weakness of arm like face. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, this one, trouble, speech troubles. There's only one right answer. 
So let's start okay. from the bottom. Who thinks it's all of the above? Okay, so that's all but a few. Okay, all right. And then the other two people that didn't answer, what do you think? <laughs> yes? Vision changes. Changes in the vision, okay. And then one more person. One of, one of, did you answer? No? What did you think? Okay. 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 Next um, question. There's no right or wrong. Okay, we're gonna learn about it. Um, yes. The next slide, please. Thank you. Okay. What are risk factors for a stroke? Again, there's only one right answer. Who thinks risk factors? Who thinks it's high blood pressure, heart disease, smoking, or all of the above? So I'm gonna have you raise your hand. Let's, let's see who picks this. Keep your hands high. Okay, I think all of you for the most part. Okay, good, good. Okay, next um, slide. So we're gonna hold on. Okay, so what is a stroke? A stroke actually happens in the brain, and you guys hear heart attacks a lot, right? So now they term it as a brain attack, um, and it can happen in one of two ways. So in the image here on the far right, you see a brain. And the two different ways that it can happen. So on the right here, let me just walk over here. So here, you see a blockage in the vessel. And that's plaque buildup or fatty deposits in your artery. So that's preventing, this clot now is preventing blood from going to the other part of your brain. So that's one of the ways it can happen. A second way that a stroke can happen is if you have the artery in your brain and it bursts open or it ruptures. That spills blood into your brain tissue and surrounding areas. That's the second method that it can cause a stroke. Why is this important? Because blood actually carries oxygen and nutrients to your body. And as you see here, this is going to deprive blood in that area of the brain. And that is going to cause brain damage around that area. Next slide. Um, these are national data, facts here in the US. So one out of five women suffer a stroke versus one in six men in their lifetime. Do you want us to ask questions as per slides, or do you want us to hold questions at the end? Uh, let's hold questions to the end. Okay. Yes. Okay. Keep, keep that thought though. Actually, just ask your question. What is your question? I was just curious in the previous slide, right? Yes. Is that, you know, so is clotting something different? Or can clotting also result in uh, stroke? Clotting can result in stroke, yes. And clotting can be anywhere in your body, right? Correct. Correct. But the main ones that happen through, for a stroke usually come from like the heart. <coughs> They're usually in the bigger vessels that travel and break off. So there, we're gonna go over it in a little more detail, but there's like a heart condition that can happen where, so there's a little um, septum in the heart that separates the right and the left. And if you have a little opening there, you can get shunting of the blood or movement of the blood from one side of the heart to the other. And if you have a little clot that carries into that, it can lead to a stroke as well. So let's keep the questions at the end because people at home cannot hear the question. So okay. we'll have a different format for that, but let's continue our speech to the end. Okay, let's do that. So we're on stroke facts. One out of five, one out of five women versus one out of six men will suffer a stroke in their lifetime for US. It is the number one long-term cause of disability. So depending on where the stroke happens, how big the area is, and everybody's different, it can lead to disability, mild to very, very severe. Every four, 40 seconds, someone can suffer a stroke, and it is the number five leading cause of death in the US. Now, within the national data, it's 795,000 strokes a year, but in Santa Clara County alone, they get over 3,000 calls for dispatch 911 for just strokes alone. There are a lot of people, however, that live with strokes and they are stroke survivors. Um, and that's seven million, over seven million, but two thirds of those people will have a form of disability from my
mild to very severe. And so the part of this education is really to get that information out there for you guys to be able to recognize those symptoms and call it out as a stroke and get treated before it becomes permanent damage. And a lot of um, uh, research is now showing people between the age of 18 to 65, so people under 65, they are seeing an increase also in stroke risks. And uh, why, does it, why does a stroke happen? So we actually have a whole bunch of risk factors that are listed on the left. Uh, the, let's see, two, four, six, seven. The top seven are very common things that you might see with heart disease, right? Um, stress, high level of stress can cause you to have high blood pressure, can cause weakening in your vessels. Smoking, drinking, same thing. Diabetes is high blood sugar. Um, physical activity is very important. This is, this is for people who have, you know, overweight, um, sedentary lifestyle. And then the main thing I want to highlight is the high blood pressure. So there are a lot of individuals out there that don't necessarily know that they have high blood pressure because you don't necessarily feel any symptoms. No pain, nothing that really would indicate that, right? So with all of these, including cholesterol, blood pressure, cholesterol, sugar, I always tell people in the audience, the public, maybe get checked once a year with your family doctor and just kind of get an idea of where you are and if for some reason they find out that it is high and they give you medications, and it's important to take the medicines because even though you know that it's high and they give you medicines and then you don't take it, then your risk remains pretty high, right? Um, I do want to say American Heart and Stroke Association, they recommend uh, for drinking. One glass for a woman, eight ounce is normal in a day. Men is two eight ounce glasses is normal. If you go above that, you need to start reducing that. And then um, physical activity, exercise, right? Exercise is important. It's actually recommended by American Heart Association to have 175 minutes of exercise in a seven day period. So for me, I work all the time, right? So some of you all have very busy schedules. So I tell people 10 minutes in your morning when you have time, 10 minutes in your afternoon, Anything to get your heart rate up, that will help. Of course, dieting will help, right? With sugar, your um, sometimes sometimes low salt intake can help with blood pressure. Some for you know saturated fats, cholesterol type foods. So all all things in modification. Okay, now artery disease. This is the part where um, that gentleman had asked about earlier. So it's similar. Um, but artery disease, it can happen and originate, original, originate in your neck and or different parts of your body. So that's what those two are. And here is that image. So here you have a normal blood vessel with good blood flow. Here you get a buildup of fatty deposit tissue and it causes a little bit um, less blood flow as you can see. And as a result of this, it's more likely to cause clumping or blood clots here, and that's a result of that. So artery disease is very important actually to get that checked out. Another term you might hear from your doctor's office is atherosclerosis, that's what that is. Now the imaging on the far right, you see a normal leg and on the left, and then on that side, you see it's kind of red, it's poofy, it's swollen, it's actually really painful. That's a result of a blood clot. Like I said, it can generate anywhere in the body. So, um, we then move on to, uh, oh, and all of these, when I say screening, is seeing your doctor and getting it checked out. If you're at risk for it, they might do some testing that can look for these things. So, some people have an irregular heart rhythm, which is this fancy word here, atrial fibrillation. 2.7 million Americans have this irregular heart rhythm, and that's a lot, right? Um, so if you don't know if you have an irregular rhythm, and sometimes this, you just have to get screened for it. Some people will have symptoms, some people might have it for a little time, and then it goes away back to 
its normal beat, normal rhythm. So getting screened is important. What's happening here is that people with this um, irregular heart rhythm have a higher likelihood of developing blood clots. And that's what will put them at an increased risk for strokes. Now this one is um, PFO, which is the patent foramen ovale. The gentleman asked about like how blood clots work. And, but this is the opening in the heart. So we're actually all, all everybody is born with an opening in the heart when you're in the womb. When you come out, um, a lot of that will close on its own spontaneously. But there are some people, 25% or so, where that doesn't close all the way. And when you have that opening in the heart, what happens is normally your, your heart is pumping blood, right, circulating, but you have a chamber in the heart that moves it to the lungs. It's, it's pumping blood through your heart to the lungs to get oxygen. And it then pumps through the other side of the heart to, so that it can go to the rest of the body. But with the opening in the wall, it bypasses the lungs. So it's actually getting a mix of the blood that doesn't have oxygen and it's moving it towards the area to go put it out to the system, to the rest of your body. So that actually, they're saying that like if you had a risk for clots, there's a very, there may be a higher chance of having a little clot that's normally filtered through the lungs when it goes the right pathway. What's happening here is that it's just skipping that and it's going, it's now going to the other side and it's pumping it out to your body. So if it goes into your brain, you end up with a stroke. So screening is important if they suspect anything. And then of course, sleep apnea. So irregular breathing at night. Some people don't sleep with anyone at night. How do they even know, right? <laughs> so that's something to get screened for. If it's suspected. So those are things that you can do to kind of control it. And if they find anything wrong and they give you medicines or treatment, it's important to stay with that plan. Now, risk factors that you cannot control. So age, as we get older, we are at a higher risk. Gender, we talk about females having more strokes than men do. And then ethnicity. So ethnicity, they're finding that African Americans actually have a higher risk of strokes. And some of it is hereditary. So an example is sickle cell anemia. Um, family history, meaning if your mother's family side or your father's side of the family has had a stroke before, you are also at an increased risk. And then if you yourself have had a heart attack, a stroke, or a mini stroke, which is a TIA, we'll talk a little bit more about later. If you've had any of that before, you are at an increased risk for having another stroke. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so the main message behind the previous slide, four out of five, four out of five is preventable for strokes. That's 80%. We, we talk about exercise, dieting, all of that, right? So seeing the doctor once a year, and then once you get screened, and if they find out anything's abnormal, make sure to take medicines. Okay, this slide is important because um, it helps you recognize the signs and symptoms. I actually have an informational flyer to give you at the end, so you don't need to take a picture or anything. Um, so stroke is treatable, and the main message for that is be fast. There is an actual time frame that will allow you to have reversible outcomes, okay? So anyway, knowing the signs and symptoms, B fast. B stands for balance. Sudden changes in your balance, okay? You feel like you're a little off all of a sudden, or you might feel dizzy, like, oh, you should call 911. They added headaches on here because these headaches are very severe. So think dizziness, think headaches, think balance. Okay. E for eyes, so any changes in your vision all of a sudden, either you see double, either you see blurriness, maybe you can't see out of the side of your eyes or the front of your eyes, you should call 911. F stands for face, so the person across the room, you notice, all of a sudden has a droop to the face, so like a crooked, or they're eating and you notice that they're drooling all of a sudden. That means 
They have weakness on their face and you should call 911. Um, A stands for arm. So arm, if there's any weakness or numbness in your arms and or legs, um, you should call 911. I've had people ask me like what, what degree of weakness and the weakness can be anything from like being able to lift up your arm and then gradually drift to the point where they can't even lift their arm, depending on how severe it is. S stands for speech. So speech, um, if you notice any sudden changes in slurred speech or they're talking to you, but all of a sudden they're not making any sense, that um, is a warning sign. You should definitely call 911. T for time because time is essential in, uh, in uh, strokes because time is brain. When we talk about time is brain, it's that blue box. So every minute counts. For every one minute you have a stroke, you have about 1.9 million brain cells that are dying. And that's about three weeks of your memory. For every one hour a stroke happens, that's about 120 million neurons and three and a half years of your memory gone. So that's a lot, right? Uh, so other symptoms we talked about is dizziness, confusion, and memory issues. Now the blue uh, information here is more specific to women. So fainting or passing out, general weakness or feeling very tired, uh, trouble breathing or catching their breath, shortness of breath, any changes in their behavior, they're not acting like themselves. Nausea and vomiting, and of course pain. So this pain, I put it under, we put it under women because migraines happen in women more so than men. So. This pain actually can happen in men too, in the head especially. When people say, well, how do I differentiate a migraine versus this headache? And I tell them, well, migraine, if you normally have migraines, you know what your normal is. But if you witness or experience this sudden headache, it is the worst headache of your life. That is usually the term people will say if they experience one of those um, bursts or ruptures in their brain. And it can also happen in the neck. Okay. So the slide is very busy, but the takeaway for these are the two strokes we highlighted earlier. The blood clot happens in about 87% of all strokes, 87. And then for a bleed or a rupture, that happens in about 13% of all strokes. So as you can see, that number is very different. Um, we are also mentioned earlier a TIA or a mini stroke. So I'm going to jump to this. A mini stroke. The difference between a mini stroke and a regular stroke is that the symptoms you experience for a TIA or a mini stroke is similar to the stroke symptoms we talked about, but the symptoms go away within minutes up to 24 hours. But why is this important? Because it's actually a warning sign. Your body told you and you were experiencing stroke-like symptoms, there was maybe an underlying reason. So we tell people to go to the hospital and they will do the same workup as if you had a stroke. And they usually, in this case, can find if you had one of those underlying conditions, like the irregular heart rhythm we talked about, any um, like artery disease we mentioned, they can find a lot of that when you get your care there. Uh, for everybody who doesn't get treated because I'm back to normal, it's actually really bad because um, nine to 17% of those patients that have had a mini stroke can experience a full blown stroke within the first 90 days, very likely. So we tell them to get treated. The gold standard of care, as you see, is in gold. Um, this is a medication that if you are of the 87% and had a blood clot, you can get this treatment. And it's a medication that goes through your IV. It's a blood clot dissolving medicine. So what it will do is that it will basically slowly dissolve the clot. And then once that clot is slowly disintegrating, your blood flow can restore to those areas of the brain. There is about, um, the, uh, about, I tell people four, about four hours, up to four hours. So the drug is FDA approved up to three hours.
but studies in now in American Heart Guidelines, Stroke Guidelines, are saying it's four and a half. But I tell people four hours, because if you go to the hospital within the four and a half, and you're right at that cuff, you might not qualify for this medication. Now, all hospitals in Santa Clara County can do this drug. Um, if, for some reason, you're beyond the four and a half hours. So, example, you made plans with a friend at 10 p.m. the next day to go grab coffee or go for a walk, walk with your dog, 8 a.m. They never showed up because you find out when you go to their house, you find out they couldn't get out of bed because they were feeling dizzy or they had weakness in their body, right? So it's 8.30. When did the stroke happen? Did it happen at 8.30? Did it happen at 10 p.m.? So could it, the answer is we don't know. It could have happened anywhere in that time frame. So you're beyond that four, four and a half hours. So they, um, when you call 911, the ambulance will then take you to some other hospitals, which are comprehensive <coughs> certified stroke centers. There's three in Santa Clara County. And so what they will do there is that they can do other procedures, usually through the groin, and they will go all the way up and they'll find that clot and remove it. So that's one option. If you had a brain bleed, for example, they can do procedures there where they can stop that bleed So because you don't want it to evolve and get worse, right? So those, uh, I do often get questions. Well, how do I know if I go to this center or this center? And the answer is you don't, you call 911. And a lot of people have <clears throat> talked about, like, worried about cost, like for 911. So one of the things that the uh, Stroke Foundation has been telling people is that when an ambulance, when you call 911, and um, the ambulance comes to you, it is their job to rule out an emergency. So even though I'm a nurse, and like you mentioned, some of you are doctors here, you don't necessarily have equipment to do something about it if something bad happened in the, in the room. So when you call 911, they'll bring all that equipment, they'll rule out all the emergencies, and if it is clearly an emergency, like a stroke is, they will directly transfer you to the hospital. And they will call ahead of time and say, you know, so-and-so, we're here, we are 10 minutes out, we're bringing in a stroke. So they will make room for you for the hospital. Now, if they determine it is not a stroke, then at least it gives you a little bit of reassurance, right? And if for some reason it's not a stroke or if it's not an emergency and they say it's fine, you can go to the doctor on your own. Um, in that instance, you actually don't get billed at all. You don't get the, the costly bill. So I just wanted to point that out because people have brought it up multiple times. Okay, so this image I took from the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke. It's um, the brain MRI. So here you see one hour after symptom onset. So blue is normal in this brain, and the green area is the area that is no longer receiving blood because of the clot, right? They go to the hospital, they get the medicine after clot is dissolved. They re-imaged, and as you can see, most of that is mostly restored, a little bit of haziness, which um, like I said, we're not part of, we're, this wasn't our own patient, so I don't know if there's any symptoms, but this is what we're aiming for. If a person has symptoms and then they say, let me sleep it off, I had done heavy lifting yesterday, or I've carried heavy groceries, my arm's weak for a reason, and then they sleep it off, well, the next day you're still gonna have the symptoms if it, if it was a stroke. In that instance, not this image, that will become permanent damage leading to severe disability for some people. So we really want to strive for the early arrival to the, to the hospital for treatment. Okay, takeaway messages. So stroke happens and it happens to anyone regardless of age. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a male or female. It doesn't matter what your sex is. And it doesn't matter if your ethnicity. Time is brain we talked about. The symptoms, right? Which is your be fast. I have the flyer to give you all at the end. And then calling 911. 
we talk about the Stroke Awareness Foundation, and they have an app that you can actually download on your smartphone. So if you have an Android or um, an Apple phone, you can download it for free. What's nice about it is that you will always have your BeFast in your pocket. And then the second thing is, this is the home screen of the app. So your signs and symptoms of your BeFast. You can put up to six emergency contacts in your phone. Um, and also your nearest stroke center. So let's just say that you're traveling. You're now in New York. This is an app that's great for the entire nation. It will locate your nearest certified stroke center for you, even if you are in New York or LA. And then if you call 911 through that, it sends an automatic text, text message to your emergency contacts. So that's really nice. There was someone that had asked me for, before, and he actually did it because I've never pressed the 911 button. I will not do that. But um, I had someone tell me, well, I knew someone who actually used the app because they were having trouble speaking. So when you're having trouble speaking and you call 911, it's very hard sometimes to tell them your situation. But they were in the stroke app, and they were able to detect his location. So they sent him an, sent him an ambulance they were able to um, get treated that way. So I can help you with the app if you want it later. Um, and then the other program I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned, but I do fall prevention as well. So fall prevention, so we mentioned B for balance, right? So fall prevention is something that is actually tied to this grant that I do. Part of the resources we provide for the community is to prevent fall-related injuries that number is getting higher and higher as we are living longer, right? So this program is actually free for the community of all of Santa Clara County. It's an eight week program if we do it in person. We currently offer it at the hospital, but I also do outreach in the community. So if your organization, if you all have interest in it, it's a possibility we could bring it here. So. It is eight weeks long, two hour classes. You learn different ways to manage fall concerns, your fall risks. They go over home safety. We bring in a healthcare professional, like a physical or an occupational therapist to go over more technical things. And then also light exercise is built into this program to keep you working, strengthening some of those muscles. And the, the more you don't use your muscles, the more you it becomes weak, right? So that this is really the part of it, um, preventing fall-related injuries and stroke disabilities. Um, we also offer this program virtually, and if it's virtual, it's nine weeks. We added a one additional session to it because we go over how to use Zoom, like how do you turn on your camera, how do you type in the chat box, things like that. So that is something to think about. Questions? I have a request to when somebody asks the questions, yes. please repeat the question. I repeat the question. Yes, you repeat okay. the question because the question they are asking, people at home cannot hear the question. They don't have a microphone. Okay, got it. So if you repeat the question, they will know what the question and what the answer is. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. So before, yeah, before you get started on this one, uh, is there, yeah, is, is there a cost for these classes? No, no these cost. are all covered under the grant. Okay, so is there a minimum? Yes, the minimum of people is eight. Eight, okay. And we can register up to 14 okay. for one program. So let's say you have 20 people okay. interested. You just divide the program into two. Okay, okay. and what are the days? Do we, do we make them up as we go to the We or? make it up as we, we make, yes. Yeah. You make it up based off of the needs of your folks. Okay. So let's say most of them want a Wednesday morning. Then you get back to me and I'll make sure we have the instructors available for that. You said you said they have to have certain symptoms of I mean do no symptoms. anybody qualify? Anybody who Who's worries sure? about falling. Okay. Anybody who's fallen in the past. Okay. And when I say worry about falling, they they don't have to have experienced the fall. Okay. So like people who had the stroke symptoms maybe the weakness in their arm or leg, they're worried about tripping over. Yeah. This could be a good program for them. Okay. We will check this uh, with the community and I'll get back to you if there's enough interest okay. to take you up on that offer. Okay, <coughs> sounds good. Sylvia, yes, hi. Um, you might, do we go to, you might
emergency room or do we go to stroke center? Usually we have a stroke center. Yes, it's a stroke center, but all the hospitals in Santa Clara County are stroke centers. You just call 911. Yeah. They will determine which hospital is appropriate for you because not all of them are comprehensive. So if you fit within the window, they might take you to the nearest center, wherever you are located. But if you're beyond that, then they might take you to the other ones because transporting, like if they took you to the nearest center and then they find out you had some issue and you needed other procedures that they can't do, they'll transfer you. Transfer takes time. Remember, time is brain. So that's why when people ask me which hospital, you, you, you don't do that. Just let the ambulance people take care of it. Yes, that's a good question though. Well, I put it in case if it's not severe and if you're driving yourself. Oh, so yes, you don't want to drive yourself. Mm -hmm. And the reason they say this, I actually had a stroke survivor told me he thought he was having heart problems and he was driving himself to the hospital. As he was driving, his stroke was evolving and he experienced weakness in the arm and he pulled over to the side of the road. So don't be, don't scare people while you're in a very hectic mindset. Yeah. Um, question? Yes, um, the, uh, the symptoms, like um, balance, mm -hmm. darkness, of, and then the, um, uh, how long does it need to prolong to predict that, that it is fine? One second, two seconds? So the question is balance. How long do you have to have these symptoms before you determine what you need to do? So the answer to that is these are sudden changes. Remember, you're normal, you're just happening, you're doing your daily routine but all of a sudden, you feel like your balance is off. You should think stroke. You should just think that and go that route. Because if you wait it out, who knows? If it really is a stroke, it's just gonna evolve and it's gonna get worse. And time is of the essence. So these are all sudden changes. But good question. I saw a hand, or I saw your hand first. Is it possible that the TIA can create damage to an eye rather than the brain? Can the TIA do damage to the eye? And the brain. No, not the brain. I mean the eye. Can the TIA do damage to the eye? Yes. I'm going to leave that for Dr. Hassan to answer. He's here. I'm just meeting him, but I didn't know his face. <laughs> yes, the TIA um, just small clots going in the brain. So there's a. Uh, Blood supply. That's a little better. The other mic for you. Sylvia, you can have that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what is it? You know, so your eyes can be affected, and um, your you know sense of taste, um, sense of smell, so anything can be affected. So yes, uh, you can have eye uh, if you're that nerve supply uh, to that side of the eye, so it can be affected. Is it also called CRVU, central retinal vein occlusion? Central retinal venous occlusion is completely different. So that's more like a congestion in the vein, venous system. So it's a uh, stroke he's talking about is all arterial. It's coming through the artery from the heart, from the left side of the uh, so left side of the heart going to the brain. So congestion is a venous congestion, just like sometimes you have uh, congestion in your legs. Um, and uh, you have this venous stasis, we call it, in the legs. So it's the like same concept. Do you think CRVU is different than the TIA? It's completely, mm -hmm. yeah, it's completely different. It's not a stroke. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Uh, question. Yes. I mean, <clears throat> this um, TPA and all this, it takes a long time. So I work in the emergency room, so uh -huh. cardiac cancer. It's not that fast that you go and they'll drip the TPA. Right. It, it takes a long time. Right. You go to emergency room, that's two, three hours, six hours. Mm -hmm. Then you go to cath lab. That's a long time. Um, so you said uh, three hours was initially the gold standard. Presentation. Is it yeah. more now, like four hours, five hours? So TPA. Um, and they do angioplasty more rather than TPA. Now. Right, right. First of all, never drive to the hospital, so that's for sure. You know, so I so, um, so think as uh, Sylvia said, you while they are coming in, they're also calling the hospital, so they are getting ready for you. I heard that. 
So DPA, um, we I think take pride in giving DPA in shortest time possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now time window is still you know four and a half hours, but like in my hospital, DPA is most of the time given within 45 minutes. So <clears throat> while you're getting the CT scan, if you're going into the CT scanner, uh, there is a neurologist who is on telemonitoring. You know, so he's uh, uh, calling in and he's already talking to the patient or talking to the family. Um, and the scans are being done within 15 to 30 minutes. And once we have the scans back, TPA is already ready to go. So TPA will be given within 45 minutes to an hour. So shortest the better. And it's uh, it's a bag. Uh, it doesn't have to be mixed with other medicine. So it is a medicine. Um, there's a bolus. You give one push, and then there's a drip, which runs for 90 minutes. So and now there is a new drug uh, which came out, which can be given as a bolus, one time push, mm -hmm. which may change the entire scope in the future. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. The, Stroke can happen even if there's no family history, right? Uh, yeah, so there are, uh, you know, risk factor you can control, and then there are risk factor you cannot control. Yep. You had a question. Yes. So, uh, normally uh, you have the symptoms like you, so you were sitting down or you stand up, mm -hmm. or you just picking up and you stand up, all of a sudden you don't feel the pain. So, uh, the doctor says that you don't get up all of a sudden. Can you tell because you say that can be a sign of the stroke too, right? Mm -hmm. So how can you tell the difference between a stroke versus just a general common stroke? You want to answer that? Or besides? Um, of course. <laughs> so there are some clear-cut symptoms. If one side of the body is paralyzed, and that's easily recognizable. So if your symptoms are staying for a few minutes. You don't want to, you know, uh, get yourself confused. So you want to get immediate attention <clears throat> as long as you have a higher risk factors, right? So if you have uh, multiple risk factor, you, uh, that atrial fibrillation, did you talk about? You know, it's an irregular heartbeat, uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, you know, all those risk factors. So if you are above 65, so all, uh, I think those things also count. And yes, there are symptoms. You know, everyone can dis get dizzy. Everyone can have a headache. Uh, but you have to look at the bigger picture. So you think the duration of time? Yeah, duration of uh, it does matter, you know. So if, uh, if it's uh, stay, you know, you have consistent <laughs> symptoms for a few minutes, then obviously you should get worried. Okay. Uh, you should not take it lightly if you have a, a multiple risk factors. And if you do position changes, because that's part of the fall prevention program. Um, is that you want to rise slow, right? When you rise slow, just give yourself a minute. If the symptoms persist, well, that might be something to consider, is a stroke. But if the symptoms kind of resolve a little bit, and then just see how you feel when you stand up, right? Like laying to sitting, sitting to standing. But if it persists, definitely think stroke. And uh, what food habits can prevent a stroke? Habits to prevent stroke. Um, yeah, your that's a question. Can you repeat? Oh yes. Yeah. So what habits prevent strokes? What food yeah. habits? Food, food habits. habits. Food. Uh, not pizza. Yeah. <laughs> pizza is not one of them. Pizza is no red meat. So we just went through weasel. No, duh, so. <laughs> I say everything in moderation. It's good. Yeah. Yes, if you really want to no. know, actually American Heart Association has a whole website of all the foods you want, from like desserts to entrees to salads to soups, and they will give you recommendations on this is a better alternative. So it's actually free and available uh, to the public. I can look it up and I can forward it to Faisal and he can maybe forward it to you if, if want to go about it that way but you can definitely google it and it's just everything in modification so like low fats low i don't know low sugar intake low salt intake all of that yeah, but, mediterranean food you know they the ha they do recommend it's better than you know other olive oil and all the nuts and uh, you know avocados so um, 
Yeah, so anything in moderation definitely is a good idea. Yes. So you said high blood pressure, right? Mm -hmm. What is uh, usually, how, what blood pressure is considered high blood pressure? And, and how, so let's say if a person is on a blood pressure medication, mm -hmm. what is the, uh, how much uh, high you think it's, it's high for to be, you know, thinking of uh, as, as, a, as a, you know, symptoms of blood pressure while, or heart attack, you know, while uh, it's happening. Right? Yeah, no, that's a good question. So 120 over 80 is normal. And then they separate it, they categorize by pre-hypertension or pre and then if you are hypertensive and then so on and so forth. But that number is like 139. Yeah, 130 by 80 um, is considered less than 130 by 80. But you need all the people have, have lower blood pressure regardless, mm -hmm. right? Uh, depends, not necessarily. So I mean, the, the, the question was that you know, I mean, if a person has a, uh, maybe I'm not asking the right question. Um, I think I know what you're asking. Let me repeat the question for all the Facebook Live people. The question was, what is normal blood pressure? How high is blood pressure need to be to consider worrisome and thinking about stroke? Right. right? That was your that, question. That is also, yeah. That. Yeah. So, do you want to answer that or? So. It all comes down to risk factor. Um, how many risk factor you have? So you have high blood pressure, you have diabetes, you have irregular heart rhythm. You know, so at that point, your blood pressure goals are different versus no risk factor. But in general, less than 130 by 80 is considered a good uh, range you should keep and maintain whatever the age is. You know, so if you have higher risk factors, then uh, the other things like your cholesterol, um, what is your uh, cholesterol level, that hyperlipidemia, and, and your LDL levels, so that also counts. So I think it's a combination of multiple things. Yes, go ahead. About the, the last bullet, the sleep. So how many hours sleep should we have, and can we break it out like, five hours in the night and two hours, I don't know, just give me an example. Or you have to have a solid continuous six, seven hours of sleep, eight hours of sleep. This one is, um, so the question is number of hours of sleep. So what is considered good sleep? I think six to eight hours, eight hours. But this one is uh, specifically for sleep apnea. You know, that at night time you stop breathing for a few seconds and then you know your oxygen level drops and that increases the risk of stroke. Um, so what they are recommending is to, if you have high risk factor, you know, thick neck, you know, bo uh, body habitus, then you should be screened for sleep apnea. If you don't get good sleep normally, then it can lead to stress and it can lead to- problems. Absolutely, yeah, all those risk factor, you know, so your blood pressure can mm -hmm. uh, stay high and your cholesterol, so everything. Uh, I to get so vicious circle. I should try to get six to eight hours of sleep. Absolutely, yeah. Yes. So, uh, some of the root, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Some yeah. of the root causes that you have, uh, or the risk factors that you have listed here, which has the screen. So, if you are attending your annual checkup with your doctor, the doctor is automatically doing the screening for you, right? Or do you, do you need to do certain additional steps to go through the score of five of them? Well, that depends on your risk factors. If you have, like, maybe a family history, or they're worried about it, they will they will look into that more and give additional testing. So if they're worried that you might have a funny heart rhythm, there's a possibility they're gonna do more testing for you. Will they automatically order it? I don't think they will, personally, but if, if they're concerned about it, then they should. I can tell you that 60% of the patients never go to the doctor. They can take the sleep and never go to the doctor. Take their sleep and never go to what? Take a slip from the doctor and never go to the doctor. Oh. Well, that would be unfortunate. <laughs> so, Leah's goal over here is to have a primary prevention. Yes. So, so you don't get to me. You know, so. Once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you 
know, so it's uh, it's it's a free world. So um, by the end of the day, it's up to you. Uh, so all you can do is to provide education, and uh, you know, so you know the risk. And if you want to take it, you don't want to take it. It's up to you. There was a question in the back. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, how did you go ahead? Critical care doctor. <laughs> okay, so um, diet and nutrition. Sylvia, maybe you can answer that. I can't. Uh, <laughs> high protein diet. What's yes. the question? High protein diet. Oh. You know, so is that good for you? Probably high not. Protein? <laughs> high protein um, diet. Moderate. I don't have moderate. Exactly. Yeah, I don't have a recommendation. What is high protein? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is high protein? yeah. You know, and you can eat. Like if you have high blood pressure, so you should not be having a uh, high uh, salt diet. So you know, so, um, two grams per day versus three grams per day. So, uh, but yes, it's a good, I think there is a lot of information on EHA website about the diet, uh, but I may not be the right person. I can look right. into it and see if I can find anything about it. Your question was, if you have a large intake of protein, like for workouts, yeah. is there a negative impact? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Especially for that age group. I know people like me don't take any pro workouts. Like that's for the young. A lot of kids are taking soy protein as well. 35 and below, we'll say. A soy protein. Soy protein? I will look into that. If I find anything, I'll forward it to Saito. Yes. If I don't. of peripheral artery disease like it can happen anywhere in the body right but the ones that do cause a stroke usually generate or originally originate uh, originate from the heart or maybe some in the in the sure. neck um, are the main ones that it would contribute to for this one remember we talked about like the heart has the like the hole in the wall that never really closed so for that if you had any clot let's just say a clot like that, and a small one, a small piece of that broke off, a teeny tiny piece of this large one, and it traveled through your heart, but instead of going to your lungs, because the wall's not closed, it's actually moved to the other side, you don't have that filtration system. So now it's gone to the other side of the heart, and it's pumping that potential clot into areas of your body. So if it hits the brain, then it's a possibility of a stroke. Does that clarify your question? Yeah. Okay. Clot. Clot can go from um, can build up in the vein or the artery, right? So um, that this PFO, this can go from the right side of the heart from to the left side of the heart, and uh, then the, for atrial fibrillation, that's just irregular heartbeat. So that can build up on the left side of the heart and can go anywhere. So clot can go anywhere in the body. So it's not necessarily can go to the brain, you know, so it's uh, you know, uh, flow, so it can go anywhere. So that was my question. If the brain's very clear, mm. let's say you have a clot in your leg, mm -hmm. what kind of symptoms do you need? What kind of prevent prevention do you need to do? Like do you call 911 right away? Does it show up right away? Does it take time for it to show up? So, so um, if a clot can go in your limb, um, so it's an, also an emergency. Okay, so anything which is in your going through your arterial system is an emergency, and you have to call 911, and you should go to the emergency room. And uh, the symptoms um, you can have your heaviness, numbness, and the claudication. So uh, it can build up acutely or it can build up over time. Uh, so anything, you know, 
It can go into your uh, kidneys. It can go into your, you know, in, any other major organ, or can go into your heart. Um, so yes, so it will be an emergency. <coughs> I have a question. Anybody else? The, the number one risk factor is stress. Mm -hmm. uh, is there stress <laughs> The question is, is there a stress ometer out there that you can measure your levels? And I, I would say the answer is no, I'm not aware of it. But <laughs> I like it. Good opportunity for invention. <laughs> And stress can be How acute. Close are you like, to your wife? Check, check her I mean, stress can happen to all of us. I'm sure everybody now, you know, with like COVID and all that stuff, but like family, professional, everything, right? Um, but there are very, very like situational things where like if someone got into a fight with someone and then all of a sudden that causes increased stress or anger. It can also shoot up your blood pressure, and that's actually one of the main things I have heard that has caused blood, um, like a like a bleed in the brain. So I've got a stroke. Mm -hmm. There's a pop, um, and there's a bleeding inside the brain. Is that same as the brain hemorrhage? Is that yes? Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. And I have another question. If nobody has any other questions, somebody do. That's a Dubai. Are you mom? Who has a question? You know, you have it. No? Okay. Oh, that's not the way. Ten minutes right. ago, I had uh, some eye problem. Uh, all of a sudden, I had uh, floaters in one eye. And the, the, the guardian said he could call me to go to the emergency. And emergency thought that I had a problem. But when they did many blood tests, they realized that it was not a stroke. And then they said, that's it, my eye. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, floater in your eyes, you know, it can be glaucoma, um, it can be stroke. So, yes, yeah, so the differential is always high, uh, you know, broad. So, once you go to the emergency room and uh, you start doing workup and then start ruling out uh, different etiologies. So, it looks like in your case, it was not a stroke. Nope. So, <laughs> So the question, I have a question if nobody has any other questions. So, uh, stroke happens and you lose your limbs, you know, uh, function of your limbs, right? Yeah. Right or right? Mm -hmm. uh, and you also lose speech, right? You can't. You can't, yes. right? yeah. yeah, you can't. So, uh, one of the doctors told me that uh, this, this may be right or wrong, I don't know. If you're right-handed or left-handed, mm -hmm. especially if left-handed, mm -hmm. you don't lose your speech if stroke happens. Is there any truth to it? No. <laughs> um, so your speech is on the dominant side of your brain. Okay. And most of the people are right-handed. Right. And their dominant side is left side of the brain. Okay. So their speech is also, speech center is also on the left side of the brain. It's uh, not 100%, but most of the time. So if you are right-handed and your um, the right side goes down, then that's, yes, there is a possibility you may lose your speech, depending what area of the brain is affected. And it's vice versa, you know, for left-handed, your dominant side may be on the right side of the brain. Okay. So, so don't go trying to practice writing with left hand, because I've been trying. Yeah, it's not going to make any difference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any more questions? And uh, uh, what test available to check the health condition of brain? Um, health What's condition the of the brain. What's the question? So what are the tests available for um, to check the health condition of the brain? So um, there are screening tests for multiple things, but I don't think so there is any screening test right now for the brain. Can we scan the brain? And it's, uh, <coughs> I think it's unnecessary at this point. There is no evidence that you have to scan brain every year to make sure that it's, everything is uh, doing well. And um, I think um, doing just a CT scan may not show anything most of the time. 
So when we are doing the CT scan for a stroke, most of the time there is nothing there because the patient presents very quickly and the brain CT is normal. And um, it takes few hours for uh, on imaging to show if there was a stroke or not. So what we want to know is all based on the symptoms. And if one side is weak, speech is affected, most likely it's a stroke, go ahead and clear the medication. Blood clotting or blood blockage in the brain happens suddenly or it gradually? Suddenly. suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. For stroke, it usually happens suddenly. So that means we can't prevent. Uh, yes, you can prevent. That's uh, yeah. so all those yeah. risk factors. Yes. So those Bring risk factors the are the one. <laughs> what you what you guys need to work on is all the risk factors. Mm -hmm. Minimize those risk factors: blood pressure, diabetes, hypertension, your diet. We were talking about exercise, stress. You know, so all those risk factors, and you know that that yeah, uh, the list. slide prior to this. <laughs> those are the risk factors. Yeah, that. You know, so I think. As long as we are working on those, then we are in pretty good shape. Not just for the brain, also for the art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, are you going to give this presentation to the faculty? Um, I actually have a couple of informational flyers I would like to pass out. But before we get there, is there any last minute questions for this? Okay. I have three more questions. It's um, okay. The first question. There's only one right answer, so I need you to raise your hand, okay? So what should you do if you think you're having a stroke? Lay down, see if you feel better later. Call 911, it's an emergency. Drive yourself to the hospital. Call your friend and family and have them take you to the hospital. So, who thinks if you're having a stroke, A, lay down, see if you feel better? Okay, who thinks B, call 911, it's an emergency? Keep your hands up because I'm going to count them, please. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is it all? <laughs> okay, who picks, who picks C? Drive it yourself. Who picks D? Call your family and friend. Before this presentation. Okay, yes. I will count you all as call 911. That is the correct answer. You do not want to see, you don't want to lay down because if you lay down, you're going to wake up, you're going to miss your four hour window, your four and a half hour window. You don't want to drive yourself. We talked about worsening outcomes, right? Don't be a hazard on the road for others. Don't call your family and friends. They've taken people to the hospital. They will sit around the waiting room and they will wait, okay? So call 911. Great, okay? So when you call 911, it takes some time to arrive. So imagine five or ten minutes. During five, ten minutes, what we can do? So dispatch will stay on the phone with the person that calls and usually they'll ask like are they breathing are they you know they'll ask all those questions and they'll walk you through it until the ambulance gets there. So if there's any concern or worries about that they'll be on the phone with you. Mm -hmm. Okay next question. What are the signs and symptoms of a stroke? There's only one right answer. So difficulty with speech, confusion, weakness in the arm or leg, dizziness, all of the above. So just raise your hand, what do you think? Okay, just keep your hands up for this one so I can see. Okay, good, 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 thank you. Anybody picks dizziness? Anybody picks weakness in arm leg? Confusion? Okay, good. Yes, it's all of the above. Yes, it's our BFAPs. So I'll give that but, to you. But the answer, correct answer is and or, any one right? of them. Not all of them at yeah. the same time. It could be no, any of them. It could be any of them. But my question is, what are the, like, what are general signs and symptoms? Yeah. So it could be any one of them. But any of them. Yes, all of them. And then the last question: What can you do to reduce your risk of a stroke? I'm going to call him the guy in the blue. What's one thing you can do to prevent it? What's your way of lowering it? All these factors, whatever you show me. Yes, but just name one thing. Just one thing. <laughs> like any answer, like I don't know. Controlling cholesterol and having good Yes, weight. okay. Controlling your cholesterol. Anybody else want to shout out an answer? Reduce stress. Yeah. Exercise, reduce stress. Yeah. 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 Sugar, yeah. cholesterol, yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Take your medicines, right? If you are given them. If um, if anything, see your doctor once a year. 
measure that blood pressure, right? Okay, good, thank you. That is the thank end of my presentation. <laughs> And I have these little flyers I'd like to share with you all. So, yeah, well, uh, before you go, I want to take a moment to thank.